Throughout history, there have been some people known for doing some pretty nasty stuff. Inventions, intentions, and preventions. Here's my list for top five people in history you wish were never born. All right, that in itself is pretty cruel. Who am I wishing upon someone that they were never even existing? Well, after learning what these people did in their lifetime, makes me want to get in a time machine, go back, turn the clock of time myself. Here we go. Coming in at number five, Thomas Midgley Jr. This man is somewhat to blame for the absolute ludicrous gas prices right now. You'd be absolutely amazed what 50 bucks can get you. All about nine feet. But this man isn't in charge of inflation, no. This man is the man who invented leaded gasoline. Invented in the early 1920s, chemist Thomas Midgley Jr. was working on some pretty cutting edge chemistry. His task was to conjure a way to enhance automotive gasoline to reduce or eliminate the problem of engine knocking. TEL, or better known as tetrathylid, was an additive mixed with gasoline to do exactly that. And on December 9th, Tommy here unwillingly and unknowingly created what is to be the most destructive, biodangerous chemical compound, slowly and efficiently destroying our atmosphere. Long story short, this guy created the world's worst pollutant known to us so far, lead. Lead is a naturally occurring metal found in Earth's crust. Its widespread use has resulted in aggressive human environmental contamination. Companies GM and Standard Oil formed the Ethel Corporation shortly hereafter to produce Tell. The company's name was carefully chosen to avoid the use of the word lead. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, just take it right out. <laughs> right, right out. Of course, shortly after its production, workers began suffering what would become lead poisoning, which resulting, not long after it opened, workers at the ethyl plant began suffering from poisoning, which in 1922, the US Public Health Service warned of the dangers of lead production and leaded fuel. However, the phase out of leaded gasoline wasn't officially banned until about 1996, and even in some places, the early 2000s. It is estimated that 7 million tons of lead were released into the atmosphere from gasoline in the United States alone, and due to its popularity and production rates since the 1920s. It has been estimated by scientists that its result on the earth accounted for about 900,000 deaths and about 22 million years of healthy life lost. I am not making a bold statement here and saying that this man shouldn't have been born. Maybe he could have been like a pilot or something or a dentist. I don't know. Number four, Gottlieb Kirchhoff. If you're anything like me and are addicted to the sweeter side of life, well then this one's for you. Seems like our boys here have something in common, but trying to find a solution actually led to creating something way worse. Gottlieb Kirchhoff was a German-Russian chemist who, through the use of his pharmacy, accidentally invented one of the world's worst things for you. The bittersweet part is that it's sugar. Well, high fructose sugar, actually. Basically the thing that makes everything taste good. From soda pop to candy. Fructose or high fructose corn syrup is made by diluting cornstarch with hydrochloric acid? Uh, yeah, hi, sorry. Excuse me, can I have the hydrochloric acid on the side? I actually just got a root canal. Yeah, thank you. But the bittersweet part comes from the effects. See, this guy had no idea the impact of his tasty formula would have on the body. Basically, this stuff is in everything we eat and drink. To give you some numbers, kills about a million people a year. And I'm lowballing. Messes up our body, regulates our energy levels, and is responsible for the diabetes crisis and one of the leading causes of death from disease for humans. That's not so sweet. Next time you eat or drink anything, just look at the label. See what's in it. This guy thought he was doing us all a favor, making things tastier, making things deadlier, dude. I tried to mix this list up a bit instead of repeating main players we know who've created or have been responsible for all the atrocities, and I chose Kirchhoff to be on this list for the impact that he would have on the future. I'm looking at the long game here. And if this guy wasn't born, then we probably could have avoided this breakthrough chemical discovery. And unless I'm Kyle Reese from The Terminator, we'll never know. Number three, Alfred Nobel. We're sort of seeing a pattern here. These people had somewhat of a good intention that later turned out to be not so good, which led us to even asking, were they even supposed to be born at all? Cruel, but food for thought. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish chemist, engineer, inventor, and philanthropist, and known for having sacrificed his entire fortune to establish the Nobel Prize, holding 355 patents of his own in his own lifetime. Hmm, smarty pants. Nobel's most famous invention, Dynamite, a safer and easier way of harnessing the explosive power of nitroglycerin. That sentence in itself is hilarious. And in 1867, it would soon be used worldwide for mining and infrastructure development, and oh yeah, pretty much blowing anything and everything up ever since. And of course, let's not forget the impact of dynamite's effect on a person, place, or thing in its vicinity. We've all seen the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote cartoons. And this guy invented it, dynamite. The stick, wick, and patented chemical compound was harnessed to do exactly that. And if we've read anything at all, 
it did a lot of bad. First off, how do you exactly tinker and tailor with an explosion? What happens when you can't crack the code? He's just in his basement like messing around with files. Just a little bit more of that, little bit of this, and get down! The fact that this man did not blow himself up in any of these experiments is beyond me, and not only was this invention a new form of mass energy, in fact, the Nobel Prize was created and named after, after him. He was the first. This invention and contribution was so ahead of its time in chemistry that it revolutionized the need to push evolution ahead through science. Its creation in itself is history for mankind. The dichotomy alone. Had this man known about all the cliche train track damsel in distress westerns that would have been parodied of this destructive invention, I don't know if he would have invented it in the first place. What do you think? Number two, the angel of death. Okay. This guy definitely had it coming for sure with this list. The Angel of Death was a nickname given to this person for the disturbing amount of research he had collected via his specific scientific experiments. Why I think he shouldn't have been born at all is because to attain such groundbreaking information about the human body and its extremes, experiments needed to be run and not hypothesized. Joseph Mengele was a SS officer, doctor, and German scientist during World War II and resulted in the leading of research closely related to the extremes and limitations of the capability of the human body via DNA, via manipulation, and disease prevention, immunization, you name it. Any effect on the human body and its environment around them. I'm not going to get into what this person concocted up in his time as a medical captain, nor am I really going to make any jokes. This person pushed scientific research through the use of cruelty and pure evilness. Plain and simple. I don't like glorifying these people in these lists and I can barely stand saying some of their names out loud. We know all of these people. Though the actual number of people's lives countlessly lost due to this man's sick fascination with pushing research and his scientific envelope hasn't been officially documented, these experiments were being held were responsible for the deaths of somewhat of 6 million innocent lives. It is very clear that this person's intent was to derive violence, fear, and cruelty from day one, which I myself wish this person was never born. Crimes against humanity. No good. And number one, nuclear fission. J. Robert Oppenheimer was an American theoretical physicist and was director of the Los Alamos Laboratory during the Manhattan Project responsible for the research and creation of the very first atomic bomb. He is often known as the father of the atomic bomb and his research in 1945 with nuclear fission, the result of smashing atoms into each other with the mass energy containment resulting in a massive explosion. A massive explosion and that is an understatement. Just Google mushroom cloud. Scientists first developed nuclear technology during World War II. Thankfully, atomic bombs have been used only twice in war, both times by the United States at the end of World War II in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Fat Man and Little Boy were the official names given to the two explosive devices. Charming. What makes this so terrifying is that due to this research, the act of war and the structure of battles are now a thing of prehistoric past. The mass execution that these inventions can do is nuclear. Literally. I put Oppenheimer at the top of this list because the devastation alone due to the future with merely the technology surfacing is detrimental in itself. This is actually the first time reports that a visitor from another galaxy started. These explosions were so giant that its effects could be felt off planet. Yo, that's next level. Aliens just pulling up. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's not really good, you know. If there was a time in the future which we could send back AI, it would probably be due to this stuff. Oppenheimer was awarded the Medal of Merit from President Harry Truman in 1946 for the push in science, even if its push was in the wrong direction. All these people given awards, it's like, hey, good job. It's terrible stuff, but uh, cheers. And there you have it, folks. Those are just some of the people I think historically shouldn't even have been born at all. Cruel for me to assume something, but dive into some of this and digest it for yourself. And I feel like if I had a time machine, I would go back and use it for good. Go hold a door for someone or go do something kind. The world is too full of hate. I'm Kyle McWaters, and I'll see you next time for some spooky content.